Good afternoon and welcome to councillors, colleagues and uh, members of the press. Um, can I extend a very warm welcome to everybody uh, to this, the, the first uh, meeting of, of this new council following the recent local government uh, elections. Um, uh, I, as you will see, will be in the chair for the first uh, matters of business until we get to item four. Uh, at which point you will be invited to make an appointment to the position of provost. Uh, and at that point, uh, I will vacate the chair and the new provost will take on uh, the rest of the, the running of the meeting. You will note that we have members of the press with us. Uh, they have been asked not to take any photographs at this point in time, uh, but following the uh, appointments uh, to positions, uh, they will have an opportunity to take some photographs before we continue with the rest of the meeting. Uh, with those opening remarks, uh, I'll ask the clerk, Mr. Henry, uh, to take a second and apologies. Thank you, Chair. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, for the purposes of those members of the public who are watching online, if I could just ask all councillors to confirm um, that they're present in the meeting. For those councillors who are in the chambers, if you could just raise your hand. Um, for those that are joining online via Teams, if they could speak at the appropriate point. Councillor Ahern, you're present. Councillor Allen. I'm here. Thank you. Councillor Anderson. Present. Councillor Bailey. Councillor Bailey. Councillor Liz Barrett. Yep. Councillor Peter Barrett. Present. Councillor Braun. Councillor Braun. Councillor Brock. Councillor Brock. Councillor Carr. Yep. Councillor Chan, Councillor Chan, Councillor Cuthbert, present. Councillor Donaldson, we have Councillor Donaldson, Councillor Drysdale, we have Councillor Drysdale, Councillor Duff, is present. Councillor Forbes, is present. Councillor Frampton, is present. Councillor Freshwater, is present. Councillor Harvey, is present. Councillor Illingworth is present. Councillor James. Present. Thank you. Councillor Kogali. Present. Councillor Lane is present. Councillor Leishman is present. Councillor McPherson is present. Councillor Massey is here. Councillor McCall is here. Councillor McDade is present. Councillor McEwen is present Councillor McLaren, is present Councillor Parrott, is here Councillor Rebeck, is here Councillor Reid. I think we're having some connection issues with Councillor Reid. I'll come back. Councillor Robertson is here. Councillor Shires is here. Councillor Smith. Present. Thank you. Councillor Colin Stewart. Thank you. Councillor Grant Stewart is here. Councillor Waters is here. Councillor Welsh is here. And Councillor Williamson is present. So I'll just come back to see do we have Councillor Reid joining us online yet? I don't think so. Um, we'll try and. OK, um, he's he is now present. So, Chair, that's all. Council is present and no apologies. Scott, many thanks. Um, that takes us to item two on the agenda, which is the notification of members elected. This report is presented to Council for uh, noting. Uh, if there are no comments or questions, I'll take us on to item three, which is the declarations of interest and just ask any members to declare any interest uh, at this time in terms of the code of conduct. Any, decla any declarations? No declarations made. Takes us to item four, which is the election of the convener of council. And at this point, I would like to invite nominations to the position of convener. Are there any 
nominations to be made. Councillor, oh, sorry, Councillor Brock. Sorry, Chief Exec, I would like to nominate Councillor McDade as convener of the council. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Duff, just before I do that, can I just see if there is a seconder for that nomination from Councillor Brock? Happy to second, Chair. Thank you. So we have a seconder and the nomination of Councillor McDate. Any other nominations at this time? Councillor Duff? Thank you, Pam. Uh, thank you, Chief Executive. Um, I would like to put forward uh, Councillor Caroline Shires, the Office of the Provost. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duff. And I take it you have a seconder? I'd like to formally second that. Thank you. Um, any other nominations at this time? And if not, unless the uh, movers uh, wish to speak to that, I'm inclined to go straight to a vote on the two nominations. So uh, the first of those nominations is for Councillor uh, McDade. Uh, and I'll just hand over to Scott in terms of managing uh, the vote. Thank you, Chair. So just to confirm that we have a motion from Councillor Brock, seconded by Councillor Cuthbert, to agree that Councillor Xander McDade be appointed convener of the Council. We have an amendment from Councillor Duff, seconded by Councillor Braun, that Councillor Caroline Shires be elected convener of the Council. So when I call out members' names, if they can confirm if they're voting for the motion, which is for Councillor McDade, or the amendment, which is for Councillor Shires. Councillor Ahern. Amendment. Councillor Allen. Amendment. Councillor Anderson. Councillor Bailey. Abstention. Councillor Liz Barrett. Amendment. Councillor Peter Barrett. Amendment. Councillor Braun. Amendment. Councillor Brock. That was the motion, Councillor Brock. Councillor Carr. Motion. Councillor Chan. Can I just remind members to switch their microphones on so that the public watching will be able to hear um, your choices? So that was amendment by Councillor Chan. Councillor Cuthbert. Motion. Councillor Donaldson. Motion. Councillor Drysdale. Motion. Councillor Duff. Amendment. Thank you, Councillor Duff. Councillor Forbes. Amendment. Councillor Frampton. Motion. Councillor Freshwater. Amendment. Councillor Harvey. Motion. Councillor Illingworth. Councillor James. Amendment. Councillor Kogali. Amendment. Councillor Lane. Motion. Councillor Leishman. Abstention. Councillor McPherson. Motion. Councillor Massey. Motion. Councillor McCall. Motion. Councillor McDade. Motion. Thank you. Councillor McEwen. Motion. Councillor McLaren. Amendment. Councillor Parrott. Motion. Councillor Rebeck. Motion. Councillor Reid. Do we have Councillor Reid? 
He's just texted in to say that he's voting for the amendment. Thank you, Audrey. So that's Councillor Reid voting for the amendment. Councillor Robertson. Amendment. Councillor Shires. Amendment. Is that the amendment, Councillor Shires? Thank you. Councillor Smith. Amendment. Councillor Colin Stewart. Motion. Councillor Grant Stewart. Motion. Councillor Waters. Motion. Councillor Welsh. Motion. And Councillor Williamson. Motion. Chair, I have 20 votes for the motion, 18 votes for the amendment, and two abstentions. So Councillor McDade is elected as convener of the council. Thank you very much, councillors, for electing me to serve as Provost of Perth and Kinross. Um, as councillors who are here in the previous term uh, will be aware, I strongly believe in upholding the standing orders um, and intend to do so without fear or favour. Um, as you might expect, I intend to modernise certain aspects of the role um, and ensure it reflects what our citizens expect of a modern local government, uh, whilst also respecting many of our great traditions I hope to run the civic office as a very collegiate, in a very collegiate manner um, and wish to involve all elected members in the civic life of the council. Uh, I wish to thank my predecessor, Provost, uh, from Provost Malloy, for his service to this council for the past five years. Um, and finally, I'd also like to take this opportunity to express our condolences on behalf of the council to the family of former Perth and Kinross Provost Alex Murray, who died last week. Uh, Provost, uh, former Provost Murray served as Provost between 1988 and 1992 um, and was an SNP councillor for Aberfeldy. We now move on to item one uh, and I'll invite Councillor Duff to contribute. Uh, thank you uh, Provost. I would just like to take the opportunity to uh, congratulate you on your election to this historic office and to wish you well during your time in the chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Duff, for those warm words. It is appreciated. Um, we now move on to item five, members, uh, the election of Deputy Convener of the Council. Um, I have a motion in respect of this item. Councillor Drysdale. Um, there are two parts to this uh, item. We first council has to agree there is going to be a Deputy Provost and then I'll seek nominations. Are you wishing to move a motion on the first item or the second item? Apologies, too fast on the trigger. I wish to uh, nominate someone. 
OK, thank you very much. Um, if I can ask the clerk to perhaps put a motion up for. Um, members, we're going to take a short two minutes just to get the tech working. So if you just bear with us, please. Members, I think we're just getting there. Um, just a reminder that uh, we are still live, so your microphones will be picked up on the live stream. OK, members, um, there is a motion in terms of item 5.1 uh, on the um, uh, screen for you, um, and this is a very slightly uh, amended version, so we did have hard copies, but uh, this is slightly amended, incorporating a tweak request by Councillor Duff, which I'm happy to incorporate. Um, this motion sets down that we will have a deputy convener of the council to be known as the deputy provost, um, as provided for in section 4.2 of the Local Government etc. Scotland Act 1994, to hold office until the next ordinary election of the council, unless they cease to be a member of the council before that date or removed from office in accordance with council standing orders. Part 2. Um, is a further resolution to appoint at Bailey's, which obviously our historic office uh, have served for hundreds of years within uh, this area of Scotland and indeed the wider uh, Scotland. And it sets down the terms for those offices of the Bailey's and indeed uh, notes the nominations that we have received so far for uh, Bailey's, one from each political group. I am going to invite Councillor Parrott to second this motion. Second. Are there any amendments? Councillor Peter Barrett. Hey, thank you, Provost, and congratulations on your, your appointment of Provost uh, in, in Ken, Perth and Ken Ross. Uh, I wish you all the best uh, in, in that role uh, of c civic leadership for uh, our, our area. Um, Provost, I want to make it clear that the Scottish Liberal Democrats group has no objection in principle uh, to creating and appointing uh, Baileys to assist with uh, representing the council and conducting its civic duties. Um, we want to support and approve the move to create Baileys today, uh, but rather than rush to appoint those Baileys now, uh, we believe that it would be best to defer the appointment so that further work can be done 
uh, on the detail uh, and a paper brought back to the, the, the next uh, council. Uh, as you know, I, I only received the detail of the number of the Baileys uh, and how the provost yourself proposed that they were to be nominated uh, from yourself on Monday afternoon. Uh, and prior to that, Councillor Lang had only spoken to me uh, about the proposal for Baileys in very general terms. So I think this may be the first test for the council and its administration uh, of its commitment for inclusive decision making uh, and allowing for all groups to con contribute to the shaping uh, of our future. Um, I think that 40 hours notice of this proposal doesn't meet uh, with the new standards that I was expecting. Uh, and as the council has managed since the reform of local government uh, without Baileys, and we haven't had any for uh, 19, the 19 years I've been a councillor, uh, I don't think that there's a, a specific urgency that we have to uh, nominate those today or have it as a, a, an urgent item. Uh, you know that I wrote to, to, to you in the hope that uh, we could agree to defer this matter until the next council meeting to allow uh, for a formal report to be brought to the council. Uh, and I think that this short, day short delay uh, would allow for the preparation of full job descriptions and duties uh, for the Baileys and consideration of the criteria for their appointment, uh, which could include uh, length of service, geographical spread, uh, gender balance in, additional, in addition to uh, political spread. And that may identify the need for more than five Baileys. And I appreciate that you promised are strongly in favour of uh, one Bailey from each uh, council group, but I think a deferral would allow for a proper examination of how other councils do that. Um, I asked, for example, my colleague, uh, Councillor Fraser McPherson in Dundee City Council, how Baileys are selected in our neighbouring authority. Um, Fraser was appointed when the criterion was for councillors to have 15 years unbroken service. Um, that was uh, amended uh, when there weren't sufficient Baileys of that uh, service duration uh, to make it 15 uh, years cumulative service. Uh, and that was further uh, flexed to allow councillors with 14 years service uh, in order to achieve uh, the, the, the number of Baileys required to conduct the, the, the duties. Uh, but length of service is certainly not, sorry, uh, uh, but a, a political balance is certainly not what uh, drives uh, the, the appointment of Baileys in that authority. Although I know that there, there are other authorities um, which, which do. Uh, in Edinburgh uh, City Council, for example, the duties of Baileys are to uh, represent the council and promote the city uh, to meet, host and entertain organisations and individuals uh, from all backgrounds and all corners of the globe. Uh, in large gatherings such as conferences, receptions or dinners uh, to make a speech uh, on behalf of the city uh, and, and uh, to the reply to any toasts to the city. Uh, their duties are also to meet and mingle with as many people as possible at events and to be identical by wearing the appropriate civic uh, insignia. Um, so the reason why I believe that members should be furnished with a job description and duties is so that there is clarity about what they're expected and required to do in that role. I don't intend to demean the abilities of anybody else in, in this chamber, uh, but some people may be very comfortable speaking at large conferences, receptions and dinners and working the room as they meet and mingle uh, and others may be less so or they may require training. And I think people should have a clear idea of what they're entering into uh, before they do that. And as I say, I don't believe that there is uh, any need to rush this through today. Uh, and I think that we should take a bit more time to ensure that we get uh, the right people in the right place and portray, portray uh, the, 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 the right public face uh, of this council uh, uh, to, 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 to people in Perth and Kinross uh, and to visitors. Thank you. So I would, my amendment is that we uh, defer part two uh, of, of, of your motion, Provost. To, until the next council meeting. Thank you, uh, Councillor Peter Barrett. Uh, Councillor Liz Barrett to second the amendment. I formally second the amendment. Thank you very much. Are there any further amendments? No. OK, um, in, uh, Councillor Peter Barrett, would you like to sum up for your amendment? No, thank you. I have a comment from Councillor Duff. Uh, thank you, uh, Provost. It was just to say that it was similarly um, Conservative group weren't aware until Monday evening uh, about the proposal to um, bring forward Baileys at today's council meeting. And I, I fully accept um, that we were um, only this morning had the opportunity to discuss and agree that we would put forward Councillor Chan as our nominee. Uh, 
uh, I fully understand Councillor Barrett's position in this and am happy to support his amendment this morning. Thank you. Councillor Robertson. Uh, thank you, Purvis. And, and again, congratulations on your uh, new position. I'm sure you'll do a great job. I'll be judged on how you um, uh, uh, respond to what I'm going to say. Um, I, I fully support what um, uh, Councillor Barrett has said, Councillor Peter Barrett has said. Um, I think the idea of having bailiffs is a good one, but it's unfortunate if you're you're bringing this forward without giving all councillors a chance to know exactly what the rule will will entail. Um, and I would certainly, well, I, I knew nothing about it until just literally 12 hours ago, which is very unfortunate. Maybe all members of the other councillors had more information, but listening to Council Duff, that doesn't seem to be the case. And I'm sure you'll be the first person to think to, to, to agree that it's better for all consulted and know how we're going forward. And um, I think it'll do no harm whatsoever to put this over to the next full council meeting, where I'm sure everybody will embrace the idea, knowing exactly what the role will involve. Thank you. Are there any other contributions? Councillor Shires. Thank you, Boris. I just um, following on from Councillor Robertson's comments. Just to add that one of the great pleasures of being an, an ordinary councillor, not necessarily convener, etc., has been being able to deputise on behalf of the province over the last 15 years, going to 60th wedding anniversaries, 100th birthdays, etc. And I would be very keen that whatever way we go forward, that there is still that opportunity for, for all councillors to participate in that aspect of civic life and that there's not a two-tier system that's allowed to develop. Thank you very much, Councillor Shires. And just to reflect very much on your marks there, um, I think the aspiration is very much to share out a lot more of the civic responsibilities so that it's not all being done by the provost and the deputy provost and actually that it is done by a much wider uh, group. And indeed, in the previous council term, um, I would have liked to have undertaken more of those responsibilities at a local level. Um, indeed, uh, and I hope that uh, this new approach will allow for all elected members to be involved um, in the, the civic life of the council. Um, just to come back to Councillor Peter Barrett's points, I, I think the motion, um, if you uh, have a quick look at it, um, does detail the responsibilities uh, that we uh, expect of the Baileys, which is to deputise uh, where appropriate for uh, and when required for the uh, provost, um, which is the standard role of the Bailey, and indeed it's what is taken from the Edinburgh description. Um, and indeed uh, details the other aspects that it's not a remunerated role, this does not cost the public anything, it is about sharing out the civic responsibilities um, and indeed it sets down a term of office but it is not too prescriptive in that in that if a political group wishes to change their nomination for Bailey at any time they are entitled to do so um, and indeed uh, it is designed very much to be about making this a much more cross-party approach to the civic leadership of the council. Um, I've got Councillor Hearn wishing to make a comment. Yeah, with respect, uh, Provost, um, in your statement there, you said it, it's prescriptive and uh, gives you uh, an exact idea of what the Bailey does. Although within the space of uh, five minutes, we've heard one thing that is not up there, and that's Councillor Shires saying that about the, um, the 60th birthdays, uh, anniversaries and 100th birthdays, which is not up there. Um, I'm sure if we could all think about it, there are other things. So I think Councillor Barrett's amendment to have it written down properly instead of just a verbal assurance from yourself um, would go a long way to understanding exactly what the Bailey position is. Thank you, Councillor Hearn. In, um, indeed, in line with what Councillor Shires had said about uh, all members being involved in a lot of that, I would not see that as being restricted to the Baileys. Um, and indeed, uh, I would hope that uh, yourself, who has indeed uh, undertaken events in the last few weeks, would continue to do so, um, even if you're not nominated as a Bailey, um, and indeed all elected members will do so. Are there any other contributions? OK, um, I absolutely appreciate um, Councillor Barrett uh, bringing 
his concerns to me yesterday after we had a discussion on Monday. Um, and that is indeed why I sought to look at all the local authorities in Scotland that have baileys to pull together this motion. Most of them have a one or two sentence description um, and I have lifted quite a bit uh, and uh, adjusted it for our locality here. Um, I think it is, the description here is broad enough that it covers what members have indicated um, and I would therefore move that we go to a vote as to whether it's the motion as written, uh, sorry, as amended with Council of Duffs and Corporation or the amendment for referral. Provost, just to clarify, my motion was only for deferral of part two and that we would be nominating a, a, a deputy provost in, under part one. Thank you very much for that clarification, Councillor Barrett. Okay, I'm going to hand over to the clerk to take a roll call. Thank you, Provost. So um, just for clarification, um, what we're, we're, we're dealing with now is in relation to the motion from the Provost and the amendment from Councillor Peter Barrett. Um, the motion from the Provost seconded by Councillor Parrott um, is as um, shown on the screen at the moment. The amendment from Councillors Peter Barrett and Liz Barrett, as I understand it, is to agree that we appoint a deputy provost um, today and shortly at the conclusion of this um, item, we'll, we'll seek nominations for that. However, um, the amendment is in relation to the appointment of further Baileys. And whilst you agree in principle, your amendment is to defer this for further detail and consideration in relation to criteria and job description, and that this would be brought back to the next Council meeting in June for a final decision. That's correct. Thank you. So again, councillors, um, if I can now ask you um, whether, if I read out your name, whether you're voting for the motion by Provost or the amendment by Councillor Peter Barrett. Councillor Ahern. Amendment. Councillor Allen. Amendment. Councillor Anderson. Sorry, could you repeat that, please? That's the amendment. Councillor Bailey. Motion. Councillor Liz Barrett. Amendment. Councillor Peter Barrett. Amendment. Councillor Braun. Amendment. Councillor Brock. Motion. Councillor Carr. Motion. Councillor Chan. Amendment. Councillor Cuthbert. Motion. Councillor Donaldson. Motion. Councillor Drysdale. Motion. Councillor Duff. Amendment. Councillor Forbes. Amendment. Councillor Frampton. Motion. Councillor Freshwater. Amendment. Councillor Harvey. Motion. Councillor Illingworth. Amendment. Councillor James. Amendment. Councillor Kogali. Amendment. Councillor Lane. Motion. Councillor Leishman. Motion. Councillor McPherson. Motion. Councillor Massey. Motion. Councillor McCall. Motion. Provost. Motion. Councillor McEwen. Motion. Councillor McLaren. Amendment. Councillor Parrott. Motion. Councillor Rebeck. Motion. Councillor Reid.
I believe Councillor Reid is still having difficulties, so he, I believe he'll vote either by the chat or by text message to my colleague, so I'll just wait for a second. Councillor Reid's confirmed via the chat and teams that he's voting for the amendment. Councillor Robertson. Amendment. Councillor Shires. Amendment. Councillor Smith. Amendment. Councillor Colin Stewart. Motion. Councillor Grant Stewart. Motion. Councillor Waters. Motion. Councillor Welsh. And Councillor Williamson. That's the motion. Provost, we have 22 votes for the motion and 18 votes for the amendment, so the motion is therefore carried. Thank you, Scott. Um, therefore, uh, we will now call for nominations for the position of Deputy Convener of the Council. Councillor Drysdale. Thank, thank you, Provost, uh, and congratulations on your appointment. Uh, I have uh, enormous pleasure in nominating Councillor Parrott for the position of Deputy Convener of Council. Thank you very much, Councillor Drysdale. Councillor McEwen. Yes, I'm happy to second that motion. Thank you very much. Are there any other nominations? If there are no other nominations, then uh, Councillor Parrott, you are duly elected as Deputy Provost of the Council. If we could ask the Baileys who've been nominated to come forward as well, please.
congratulations. Thank you, councillors, and congratulations to the new Baileys. Um, I now would like to move on to item six, which is political decision making structures. Um, and I'd like to introduce, uh, like to invite the chief executive to introduce the report. Thank you, Provost. Um, I won't speak for very long because all of the detail of, of this is contained within the report. Uh, page nine on your papers, uh, which also sets out in that page the, uh, the various recommendations. Uh, this report um, sets out uh, options for council to consider in terms of the decision making structures within council. Those options are set out in section five. Uh, highlighting the existing structures, the potential for a cabinet structure, and also the option to streamline the existing um, service committee structures. Um, the paper further goes on to detail remuneration within uh, the appendices uh, and happy to take any questions at this time. Thank you, Chief Executive. Are there any questions for the Chief Executive on the report? No, I'm not seeing any questions. Uh, Councillor Duff. OK, thank you. If there are no questions um, in relation to this report, we shall, uh, I shall invite Councillor Lean to move a motion. Thank you very much, Provost. And I'll add my congratulations to uh, all those others within the chamber uh, on your appointment, and I think you've got able deputy. I'm sure you'll have able assistance from all the Baileys and other members of the uh, the members of the elected members to carry out uh, civic duties. I think it's a good idea to have it spread as far, and uh, the people who are most invested in whatever the subject or uh, matter are, are actually attend. So, um, Provost, I was wondering if, if we could. Uh, uh, pass around the, the, the names for the um, various committees and I was wondering if you'd be indulge me in rolling in uh, number six and number seven paper so as we can do the outside bodies at the same time and, and pass them around uh, all the elected members. Very happy to take items six and seven together if members are content. Are members content that we take six and seven together for expediency? Thank you. Um, if committee services can circulate that, I'll just give them a couple of minutes to do that.
In answer to Councillor Shire's point, um, committee services will circulate to all members via email. They will also be added to the council website for public visibility. Councillor Lane, can I ask for you to move and speak to your motion um, and then allow your seconder to second the motion and then we will have a recess for members to be consider the contents of your motion. Thanks, very happy to do that, Provost. Um, Provost, I have great pleasure in moving that the Council agree the proposed political decision making structures. Proposed, appo proposed appointment of members, conveners and vice conveners of committees, the pro proposed Council's re re remuneration arrangements, the proposed timetable of meetings and the other administrative matters set out in the papers before you. This is a new dawn for this Council and I look forward to working with all elected members as we strive to fulfil the expectations of the people who have put us here, the waters of Perth and Kinross. To this end, in the days since the election, we've been putting in a lot of groundwork, along with uh, other elected members from various political groups, to set out a revised committee structure that both better reflects what I see as our priorities for the next five years and beyond, and allows for more inclusive and wider representation of views of elected members across all political, group political groups so that we can make the best decisions we can on behalf of everyone who calls Perth and Kinross home. SNP proposals also reflect the various opposition parties across the chambers, 
We are determined to do all we can to ensure a collegiate approach to business, accepting there will always be political difference, political differences to be expressed, but also proposing conveners and vice conveners from across the political spectrum who we feel are the best for these key jobs driving forward our agenda for the next five years. For clarification, the post in line 13 of the uh, sch schedule of remuneration is for scrutiny and performance role only. I'll now pass over to my colleague uh, and deputy Eric Drysdale to comment further as he is second in this motion. Councillor Drysdale. Thank you, Provost. Colleagues, this council is faced with enormous challenges moving forward. The cost of living crisis, fueled by rising inflation and rapidly escalating energy costs, presents huge difficulties to very many people in our society, especially the most vulnerable. These same economic conditions also confront this council, which must now look to balance its own books while prioritising measures assisting those individuals and families most in need. We do inherit a massive and fast increasing structural financial deficit from the previous Council, and so we will face difficult choices and decisions in the weeks, months and years ahead. We also face the challenges of climate change, uh, housing, social well-being and learning, while also optimising our environment and maintaining and developing our infrastructure. Fortunately, this Council is blessed with some extremely able officers who are able to advise the political administration uh, that, the that the voters of Perth and Kinross have put in place. But we also absolutely recognise that we do not have all the answers. That is why it is vital that we seek to engage the collective wisdom of all elected members of all political persuasions. We do not claim to have a monopoly on wisdom. Equally, we need to ensure political balance across all lead roles while also ensuring that all opposition groups are able to play an active role, not only in decision making, but also in scrutinising the performance of the Council over the next five years. We firmly believe our proposals in these papers will facilitate these key imperatives. We have sought to increase membership of key, key committees, thereby enabling this wider range of views to be expressed by elected members. And we have also very much recognised the views of councillors in the last term uh, and those elected on this occasion, that by maximising the number of meetings on a Monday and a Wednesday, more elected members will be able to regularly attend those committees to which they will shortly be assigned. We shall carefully consider proposals for a revised scheme of, scheme, scheme of administration uh, reflecting these changes and will bring these forward for consideration next month. Provost, I am delighted to second this motion and trust that all elected members will share my desire that we move forward in a collegiate manner to tackle the considerable challenges that lie ahead for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Drysdale. Um, Councillor Peter Barrett has a point of clarification he would like to raise. Uh, yes, uh, thanks, Provost. I'll be happy to be guided by you as to um, when, when it should be answered, but I did have a query uh, regarding the outside bodies, alios, uh, boards and joint committees uh, slate that's been um, issued uh, and that is with regard to uh, Perth Harbour Board, where I appear to have been omitted, uh, and I understood that there were six uh, nominations to the, 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 the hard Harbour Board uh, in the template that we were asked to uh, complete. So. Thank you, Councillor Barrett, uh, Leader of uh, Council Lane, even. Uh, Quite happy uh, if that omission has uh, slipped past us, uh, Councillor Barrett, uh, to, to have you included uh, as the sixth member of the six there before. Sorry, Councillor Barrett, I hadn't switched my uh, 
switched off if you want to speak so well now. So apologies. Uh, members, we have uh, moved a motion um, and therefore questions aren't normally taken. Um, however, given the nature of the discussion, um, I'm happy to take questions as points of clarification for Councillor Ling to answer if they're phrased in that way, if that's OK, in which case Councillor Duff and then Councillor Forbes. Uh, thank you, Provost. Yes, it is a point of clarification. It's in relation to the arrangements for the Kenosha uh, Local Committee. Um, this was initially uh, set down as a trial, and I think it was a year, but I, I would seek a confirmation of that, which I think may take it beyond the dates as per the second part of the arrangements for the committee. But uh, I would just like clarification on that and whether we can competently decide on the um, second convener, vice convener within that time scale. Thank you. Councillor Lane. Yes, thank you. That was with discussions uh, amongst the, the Kinrosha uh, elected members. The, I believe the, the trial period is going very well. Um, uh, but if it was to be decided to uh, discontinue, then these positions would uh, fall with the discontinuation of the uh, the area committee pilot. Um, so it was just to give some continuity and to show that we were uh, willing to uh, move around between all elected members from all parties uh, if it was to move forward. So it was, it was just a, a sense of direction, Councillor Duff. Councillor Duffy, you can Yeah, no, thanks. I, I say I'm not um, contesting the, the, the actual uh, details in it. It was just whether, um, you know, we could make that decision given that we haven't uh, decided to continue the trial beyond it. But I'm happy enough with the explanation that's given. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duff. Councillor Forbes. Thanks, Provost, for the opportunity to ask a question on this. I'll perhaps make a comment later about why we're still handing out screeds of paper when everyone's been emailed this. but. I'm interested in the name changes to the various committees. I'm wondering what that will actually mean for people on the ground. What will the actual difference be to the committees? For example, just picking one out, performance committee. What would that actually mean? Councillor Lane. Uh, I think that um, all the committees and the, the, the names description are to make people we inside this chamber, we uh, recognise what they are meant to be. I think um, it simplifies exactly what the remits will be of these committees, but they will have to be looked at. I think that previously um, the remits were too defined between each service committee, and I think um, moving forward we've got to have an overview where there's an overlap, a bit like a Venn diagram, where um, committees' um, decisions that affect each other are, are looked at. I think the, the, the performance is uh, to look at the performance of us as elected members, it's to look at the performance of officers, it's to look at the performance against our aims as uh, if we're living up to the uh, uh, corporate plan which we'll be um, bringing forward. So I think uh, I think it will become quite self-evident to everyone and, and mainly it's got to be self-evident to, to the press and members of the public which these, what these committees are actually looking at. So that's the idea behind it. Thank you, Councillor Lane. Does that answer your point of clarification, Councillor Forbes? Thank you, it does. Thank you very much. Um, if there are no further points of clarification on this item, I propose that we take a 10 minute recess. Is that enough for members or would you like longer? I would appreciate it slightly longer than that. Uh, maybe I could suggest 20 minutes. 20 minutes? 20 minutes, Thank yes. You. Um, 25 past two, then we will resume from the recess.
Councillors, councillors, if we could begin to take our seats, please. Councillors, have we had enough time or do we need a further recess? Are we happy? Had enough time? Yes, I'm seeing nods of agreement. I think we are therefore ready to resume then. Okay. OK, councillors, I believe um, that Councillor Ling and Councillor Drysdale have agreed to incorporate some changes into their motion. And, uh, Scott Hendry is going to detail these changes for the council. Thank you, Provost. So just to clarify, following discussion in the recess, some revisions to both the list of committee memberships and the outside bodies in relation to the licensing committee and um, the vacancy will be filled by councillor eric drysdale in relation to the audit and risk committee the two of the vacancies will be filled by both councillor kogali and councillor braun in relation to the membership of the climate change and sustainability committee the vacancy will be filled by Councillor Grant Stewart. For clarification. Sorry. Sorry. Um, we're OK over here. OK. OK. Continue, please. For clarification in relation to the Kenroshire Local Committee, whilst the paper indicates um, the arrangements, proposed arrangements in relation to the convener and vice convener for completeness, um, just to clarify, the fourth member will be the Kenosha local member, Councillor Freshwater. The proposal now for the licensing board from Councillors Laying and Drysdale is that the membership be reduced from 10 to nine members and therefore on political balance, that would be a reduction from one of the Conservative members. In relation to the Employees Joint Consultative Committee, the vacancy to be filled by Councillor Brian Leishman. And then on the outside bodies list, with regards to national appointments, the COSLA Convention, the, one, the fourth vacancy to be filled by Councillor Eric Drysdale. In relation to the Perth and Canoss Outdoor Access Forum, the 
proposed nominee, Councillor Hugh Anderson, to be replaced by Councillor John Duff. In relation to the Hope Park Trust, the two vacancies to be filled by Councillor Bob Braun and Caroline Shires. In relation to the City Centre Action Group, the two vacancies to be filled by Councillor Colin Stewart and Councillor Peter Barrett. And as indicated earlier, in relation to the Perth Harbour Board, the vacant, the, an additional member to be listed as Councillor Peter Barrett. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Um, Councillor Lane and Drysdale, can you just confirm that covers your uh, incorporations to your uh, motion? Um, happy with that, uh, Provost. Thank you. Councillor Duff. Uh, thank you, Provost. It was just in relation to the uh, licensing board reduction from 10 uh, to nine. Uh, I've sat on this board for the last, um, well, four years, I think, as I've been uh, a councillor. And obviously this is a, 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 a non-party political board, um, which doesn't split down um, um, political lines at all in relation to the matters that come before it. And even with the 10, we did at times find uh, difficulties in getting a quorum uh, for that board. And um, if we reduce it to nine, then there's a possibility that that will be even a uh, harder job. And I would just ask the uh, leader of the council to reflect on that as to why it needs to be a nine and not ten. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Duff. Are there any amendments to the motion? Not seeing any amendments to the motion. Councillor Duff, do you have an amendment? I do. Uh, thank you, uh, convener. Uh, sorry, uh, Provost. <coughs> um, following one from the results of the recent council elections, I'd like to take this opportunity to say that the um, Scottish Conservative group fully accepts the right of the SNP as the largest political party to form a minority administration with Councillor Lane as the new leader of council. Uh, there can be no doubts among members that we are facing challenging times and being leader of the council will be a very difficult job. I wish Councillor Lane well in his new role and look forward to working with him as leader of the opposition as we tackle the many challenges which are ahead of us. Uh, I also welcome the collegiate approach which the council leader and his SNG group have taken towards the allocation of places on committees, as can be seen from the proposals before us this afternoon. However, there is an important point of principle at stake in relation to one of the appointments being processed by the admin, proposed sorry, by the administration today. It has been the good practice and established custom of this local authority that the opposition parties have been permitted the opportunity to appoint the conveners and vice conveners of audit and scrutiny committees. This was a custom and practice which was afforded by my group to the opposition in the previous administration when councillors Drysdale and McCall chaired these two committees. I believe that this is a good practice which provides transparency and credibility to the work of audit and scrutiny and to the roles of the convener and vice convener of these two committees. The two committees which specifically scrutinise the role of the administration in Perth and Kinross Council. Now, this is not about the individual nominees for these positions, but about a fundamental point of principle, which upholds the integrity and the public perception of the important scrutiny function. I believe that it is vital that, that the opposition parties are seen to appoint to these roles without any perception that the administration has had a say in the decision. I therefore wish to propose the following motion, which I'll ask Scott to put up on the screen, that the opposition parties be permitted to appoint the conveners and vice conveners of the audit and scrutiny committees. 
If the motion is accepted, I'm happy to have a short recess to allow discussion with the other opposition groups and arrive at the opposition nominations for these two posts. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Duff. Do you have a second? Or? I'm happy to formally second. OK, thank you, Councillor Braun. Um, so we have uh, the motion from Councillor Lane and second by Councillor Drysdale, and we have uh, a first amendment by Councillor Duff, seconded by Councillor Braun. Are there any further amendments? Sorry, uh, convener. Yes, I've one further amendment given we've incorporated um, page paper seven in with this item, and that is to propose Councillor Bob, bon, Bob Braun for a representative to the Cairngorms National Park. Thank you. OK, thank you. So uh, are you incorporating that into your amendment then? Yes. I'm happy to second that. No, um, so uh, I need Councillor Braun to agree to incorporate that into the amendment. I'm happy with that. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, therefore, we have a motion and an amendment. I'm going to pass over to Scott Henry, who will uh, detail the terms of the motion and the amendment. Hey, convener, uh, sorry, Provost, I, I would like them to be taken separately, please. Thank you. Uh, te uh, the, in terms of standing orders, uh, Councillor Duff, um, amendments would be run off against each other, so and you have moved both. We can do them separately, um, Councillor Duff. You content with that, Councillor Braun? OK, Councillor Chris Ahern and then Councillor Peter Barrett. Yeah, question was asked of the leader of the council regarding the numbers on uh, the licensing board, and that seems to have gone past. We haven't had an answer to that. It was phrased as a comment that uh, was asked for reflection on, but I'm happy to direct it as a point of clarification to him. Councillor Lane. I'm content to leave it as nine, as we intended right from the start. There was a uh, confusion in the uh, committee services over, over how many people would be on that committee. OK, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Lane. Um, Councillors Duff and Ron, can I then clarify if your amendment stands as is or if you wish to make a further change to it based on that response just for clarity uh, no I'm, I'm happy to to reduce it to nine i was just trying to make the comment that it, it could cause us difficulties uh, as a council or a licensing board uh, going forward but we'll adjust the number accordingly and we'll come back with uh, one to be deleted thank you okay thank you councillor peter barrett you have a point of clarification it has now been clarified. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments or points of clarification the members require? Councillor Ahern. Yeah, just to clarify then, we're going to remove Councillor Duff. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification.
Scott Henry will explain the procedure. Thank you, Provost. So just to clarify, following a request in terms of standing orders, in terms of how we'll deal with the different parts of the amendment, um, we will first of all deal with the first part of the amendment that was proposed, and then we will deal with the second part. So we have the, the motion um, from councillors Laying and Drysdale, which as amended, um, and I confirmed that when we came back from the recess. The first part of the amendment that we'll deal with now is from councillors Duff and Braun, which is as follows. To Councillor Heron, uh, you've indicated that you'd like to comment. I did invite comments, but I'm happy to bring you in now if you wish. I didn't hear you invite comments. That's why I was asking if you were going to ask for comments. I don't particularly have one myself, but I didn't hear you ask for it. OK, thank you, Councillor Heron. Uh, for a second time, if there are any comments, <laughs> Councillor Forbes, Councillor Forbes. Uh, thank you, Provost, for allowing comments. I, I mentioned earlier that I'm quite disappointed to see so many sheets of paper flying around, given that we are now all technology and training in abundance to help us with this. So I was hoping that one of the uh, things you might have done in the early days of being Provost is to put a bit of paper in the chamber, so you might be able to think about that for the future. In regard to um, Councillor Duff's amendment um, regarding um, the issue over who appoints the convener of scrutiny, I will certainly be supporting him, as you would imagine, I think, for the administration to uh, put forward and support someone who is, I believe, getting an enhanced payment package from them would be nothing short of a democratic outrage. So I will most certainly be supporting Councillor Duff's amendment in this vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Forbes. Councillor Jeans. Yeah, thanks. I'm just at a loss as to why a, a quasi judicial committee licensing board, uh, why we, we have to remove a member. The, the times I sat on that board over the last five years and we've been struggling to make it quora, that I, I can't see what what the reasoning is behind making it nine instead of 10 members. Surely I, I'd rather see 12, 13 people on it because like I said, it's quasi-judicial. Uh, and with that in mind, why uh, somebody from my own group has to come off? I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss. Thank you, Councillor James. The Licensing Scotland Act only permits between five and ten members on the licensing board. Um, so it's up to the council to determine what number between five and ten they wish. Uh, the motion currently is for nine, but Obviously, if anyone wishes to propose an alternative, that is much their prerogative. I'm um, seeing no further indications for comments. Last call. Um, OK. Scott Henry will now outline the procedure for these folks. Um, thank you, Provost. If I can just come back to Councillor Forbes' point um, about the paper. I think it was felt due to the unique nature of the statutory meeting um, and the, you know, the knowledge that there would potentially be further changes. We thought it would be helpful purely on this occasion to have paper copies. However, it is the intention um, to, to continue with the technology. And I know that members have had training and we would hope that very much in terms of access to meeting papers, any motions and amendments that we would continue the practice that we developed over the last few years to use things electronically. And we're happy to give any further training to members and I'm happy that Councillor Forbes has agreed to be a champion of paperless meetings. So just to clarify again we have the motion from councillors Laying and Drysdale and we have the first part of the amendment from councillors Duff and Braun which is as follows to agree the motion however in accordance with established custom and good practice that the opposition parties be permitted to agree the conveners and vice conveners of the now audit and risk and scrutiny and performance committees. So if I can ask members to indicate whilst we deal with this first part, whether they're voting for the motion by Councillor Lane or the amendment from Councillor Duff. Councillor Ahern. Amendment. Councillor Allen. Amendment. Councillor Anderson. Amendment. Councillor Bailey. No vote. Councillor Liz Barrett. Abstain. Councillor Peter Barrett. 
Abstain. Councillor Braun. Amendment. Councillor Brock. Motion. Councillor Carr. Motion. Councillor Chan. Amendment. Councillor Cuthbert. Motion. Councillor Donaldson. Motion. Councillor Drysdale. Motion. Councillor Duff. Amendment. Councillor Forbes. Amendment. Councillor Frampton. Motion. Councillor Freshwater. Amendment. Councillor Harvey. Motion. Councillor Illingworth. Amendment. Councillor James. Amendment. Councillor Kogali. Amendment. Councillor Lane. Motion. Councillor Leishman. Abstention. Councillor McPherson. Motion. Councillor Massey. Motion. Councillor McCall. Motion. Provost. Motion. Councillor McEwen. Motion. Councillor McLaren. Abstain. Councillor Parrott. Motion. Councillor Rebeck. The Councillor Reid again was having technological issues in joining, but I believe he's able to post in the chat. So if I can now ask Councillor James, sorry, Councillor Reid to um, indicate his vote in the chat if possible. And there may be a slight delay, so I'm happy to wait a short time. Thank you, Councillor Reid. You've confirmed your voting for the amendment. Councillor Robertson. Amendment. Councillor Shires. Amendment. Councillor Smith. Amendment. Councillor Colin Stewart. Motion. Councillor Grant Stewart. Motion. Councillor Waters. Motion. Councillor Welsh. Motion. And Councillor Williamson. Motion. Provis, we have 20 votes for the motion, 15 votes for the amendment and five abstentions. So the motion is therefore carried. We now move on to dealing with the second part of the amendment. So once again, we have the motion uh, from councillors Laying and Drysdale. And we now have the second part of the amendment by councillors Duff and Braun which is that Councillor Bob Braun be appointed to the Cairngorms National Park Board as the Council's representative. So if members can once again indicate if they're voting for the motion by Councillor Lane or the amendment by Councillor Duff. Councillor Ahern. Amendment. Councillor Allen. Amendment. Councillor Anderson. That was the amendment. Councillor Bailey. Decline to vote. Councillor Liz Barrett. Amendment. Councillor Peter Barrett. Amendment. Councillor Braun. Amendment. Councillor Brock. Motion. Councillor Carr. Motion. Councillor Chan. Amendment. Councillor Cuthbert. Motion. Councillor Donaldson. Motion. Councillor Drysdale. Motion. Councillor Duff. Amendment. Councillor Forbes. Amendment. Councillor Frampton. Motion. Councillor Freshwater. Amendment. Councillor Harvey. Motion. Councillor Illingworth. Amendment. Councillor James. Sorry, amendment. Thank you. Councillor Kogali. Amendment. 
Councillor Ling. Motion. Councillor Leishman. Abstention. Councillor McPherson. Motion. Councillor Massey. Motion. Councillor McCall. Motion. Provost. Motion. Councillor McEwen. Motion. Councillor McLaren. Amendment. Councillor Parrott. Motion. Councillor Rebeck. Motion. Councillor Reid. Is indicated amendment. Okay. Councillor Reid has voted for the amendment. Councillor Robertson. Amendment. Councillor Shires. Amendment. Councillor Smith. Amendment. Thank you. Councillor Colin Stewart. Motion. Councillor Grant Stewart. Motion. Councillor Waters. Motion. Councillor Welch. That was the motion. Councillor Williamson. Motion. Provost, we have 20 votes for the motion, 18 votes for the amendment, and two abstentions, so the motion is therefore carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Councillor Ahern, I note your wish to record your dissent in terms of the first vote. That will be recorded. Thank you. Um, councillors, we have uh, received a request from the Leader of the Council to consider a motion, an urgent motion, understanding order 10.3. Um, as convener, I am ruling under section 50D 4D of the Local Government Scotland Act 1973 following a material change in the balance of the council as a result of the local government elections earlier this month that in my view this item should be considered as a matter of urgency in terms of standing order 9.3b i call on the leader of the council to move his motion uh, thank you very much provost um, we have hard copies for anyone who uh, would require them uh, to be passed around by democratic okay. services i did say to the leaders of the other groups earlier today. Uh, thank you, Councillor Lane. Um, Councillor Forbes, you have a declaration of interest. As a registered a landlord in Perth and Kinross and other areas of Scotland, I will not be taking any part in discussion or vote on this matter. Thank you very much. Councillor Forbes, will you be leaving the chamber or are you staying in the chamber? I'll stay in the chamber, but I won't participate. OK, thank you. Councillor Shires. Um, uh, for the same reason as a registered landlord. Thank you, Councillor Shires. If I can just invite the monitoring officer to provide advice. I'll take Andy Chan's declaration of interest and then the monitoring officer will provide advice. Yeah, I've got a declaration of interest as well. So Simpson is the monitoring officer. Thank you, Provost. In terms of the revised code of conduct, it is recommended that those who have declared a financial interest in this paper should actually leave the um, chamber and not participate. But there is a small room just to the back if you just want to go through there and we can come and get you when the item's been determined. I've got another declaration of interest. Uh, Sorry, I have to declare an interest too. OK, thank you. Okay, we have a declaration of interest from Councillor Brock as well. Are there any other declarations of interest? Okay, thank you very much. 
um, if the leader of the council would like to speak to his motion. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Provost. Um, after discussion, discussion with relevant officers, I've decided to bring this motion to council today. It is intended to help address the cost of living crisis that residents of Perth and Kinross are facing. Evidence has shown that the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has had the greatest impact on those children, young people and families who were already experiencing disadvantage. Provision of food and fun activities during all the periods has been shown to have many benefits for those who are disadvantaged. Such activities predominantly seek to provide children, young people and families with access to food and enriching activities. However, research has shown that the benefits of attendance at these activities also enables children, young people and their families to socialise and meet and make new friends, engage in learning new skills and increase their engagement in physical activities. By providing this additional funding now, officers will be able to plan for such provision in the October, Christmas and Easter breaks. The major the second part of the motion is the major issue that many households are facing is a dramatically rising cost of living. For many, their incomes do not meet their, the cost of their essential expenses. We as a local authority have to assist those falling through the gaps by providing additional financial assistance where we can, as this is required in order for many households to be able to maintain a basic standard of living. The proposal is that the Financial Inclusion Fund will target financial assistance to non-council tenants who may be struggling to meet the cost of their rent and or ongoing fuel costs. And in terms of fairness and best use of council resources, the welfare rights team would undertake a comprehensive benefits check to ensure applicants are receiving full statutory entitlement before a payment is made. This would also ensure that all residents of Perth and Kinross, irrespective, irrespective of housing tenure, have access to available funding should their circumstances meet the criteria. Thank you. Councillor Lane, uh, do you have a seconder for your motion? Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Provost. I'm very happy to second this motion, which will see this council make a significant difference for families in need. By agreeing this motion today, we'll be giving families and service providers reassurance that holiday hunger schemes will continue to operate through the coming new academic year. The summer holiday is already covered, but this gives certainty about October, Christmas and next Easter. Secondly, the pot of just over half a million pounds for non-council tenants will help immensely with the financial shock element of this cost of living crisis. It will also go a long way towards tiding people over who are at crisis point due to the cost of pretty much everything rocketing just now. It's not a long term fix, but it will help those who are experiencing hardship right now. It's also great to see this embryon embryonic new administration already working across the aisle to seek consensus on helping those most in need in Perth and Kinross. I applaud their collaborative approach and long may it continue. Thank you, Provost. Yeah, thank you. I have a point of clarification from Councillor Ahern. Thank you very much. Um, whilst I agree with the, the, the first part, I'm just um, slightly concerned whether there's words being missed out or whether um, to clarify the, the part that um, Councillor Lane just mentioned. Uh, the 104,000 is coming from COVID reserve. It doesn't say where the 600,000 is coming from. Um, I don't want to assume that it's just coming from the COVID reserve. Uh, and can I, am I right in that only those that are on benefits, because I think Council Lane did say it would be benefit checks, that only those that are on benefit would be entitled to access the fund and not those that are in hardship and not on benefit? Councillor okay, Lane. Um, the first part is probably an omission. It is intended to come from the COVID reserve, um, and that is my fault. Uh, so thanks for pointing that out. That I didn't state that both parts would be funded from the COVID reserve. Um, the welfare rights team um, part about the welfare rights team is they will um, anybody who applies for the financial uh, inclusion fund will they will have their benefit uh, checked make sure they're not missing out on other benefits before they, they, they access the money. Um, so they may be able to find another funding source and they'll be leaving it up to the welfare rights team to make judgment calls as they do every day on, on where this should be dispersed. Does that answer your point of clarification? Thanks for him. 
It does. So, but from what he's just said there, it doesn't preclude those that are not on benefits. It's those that contact welfare rights, regardless of their current status. Happy with that. Thank That's you. how I understand it. Um, I have Councillor Liz Barrett is looking for a question, but if you can phrase that as a point of clarification, since we're in comments, thank you. Thank you for the guidance, Provost. Um, I, I do warmly welcome this motion and the urgent action to help mitigate the cost of living crisis for those who need it. Um, I, I understand I, the, 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 the first part of the motion, I understand the second part refers to the fund being on similar lines as the scheme run by the housing team, which I assume is the support provided through the housing revenue account for council tenants, but we know that that's a limited fund also. Um, just looking for clarification that this financial inclusion fund will also be accessible for supporting council tenants if needed, um, if the HRA fund is exhausted and also to prevent homelessness, whether it's of, by council tenants or non-council tenants. Thank you. Uh, Leader of the Council. Yes, I think that this is intended to complement and uncover a gap that we don't have because the HRA account um, is funding. But I would obviously take advice from officers moving forward as this uh, moves forward. And uh, if the HRA account uh, um, runs out, basically, I'm sure we would look again at augmenting. But at the moment, this is uh, specifically for people who we do not cater for. Councillor okay, so Liz Barrett, does that answer your point of clarification? Um, I think it answers the clarification. I'm not quite sure that's where we should be going, but thank you. OK, thank you. Councillor Peter Barrett, do you have a comment? Hey, thanks, uh, uh, Provost. Um, on behalf of the um, Scottish Liberal Democrat groups, I'm uh, happy to support the motion today and I'm grateful to the leader uh, of the uh, Council for demonstrating from the outset uh, that this Council's commitment and determination to take swift action uh, and practical steps to support people in our communities uh, in the face of uh, overwhelming, uh, an overwhelming cost of living um, crisis. Um, I also welcome the high degree of political consensus um, across the Council that the cost of living crisis, uh, along with the climate emergency and the Council's economic wellbeing plan, are the three key priorities that we must address and tackle for the future. Um, Provost, as um, housing convener um, in what seems now like a, a lifetime ago uh, in the last council, uh, I led the introduction of the Resilience Fund uh, to support council tenants in debt and in arrears, uh, largely due to circumstances outside of their control uh, and because of the way that universal credit was introduced, uh, delaying payments to tenants for weeks and putting them into unnecessary and avoidable um, arrears. Uh, and I think that the uh, cost of living crisis uh, impacts on the very similar households in very um, similar ways. Um, I, I recall that there were some uh, challenging discussions with officers over the use of uh, HRE funding, which shouldn't be used to paper uh, over the cracks of harsh welfare reforms. Uh, but I was convinced uh, that keeping people out of debt uh, had huge uh, mental and physical health benefits and that rapid uh, intervention could get people uh, out of a financial hole and able to get on with their lives without being saddled with chronic financial worries uh, and, and pressures for their, for their futures. Um, we also introduced the Think Yes Fund for frontline services to utilise in an empowered, imaginative and autonomous fashion uh, to prevent homelessness uh, and to head off uh, avoidable homelessness. Uh, and I'm grateful to the Leader of the Council for his remarks that this uh, new fund sits very well with both uh, of those initiatives and complements them. Uh, but I do want to be sure that there will be flexibility uh, in how this fund is used um, and that it will be integrated with the Think Yes funding uh, and available to frontline housing staff as well as welfare rights staff uh, and that it isn't just a ring-fenced bailout uh, to private sector landlords. Thank you. Thank you, can, Councillor Barrett. Can I come? Um, um, you'll get an opportunity to sum up at the end, Councillor Lane. Um, I've got Councillor Illingworth next. Thank you, Provost. Nobody in this chamber will disagree with the good intentions behind this motion. However, I would like to strike a note of caution. Funding for this motion will come from unearmarked reserves. This council currently has a structural deficit of £10 million and that could easily double to £20 million. 
and many, many difficult challenges lie ahead. Maintaining unearmarked reserves at, at as high a level as possible will help the Council to deal flexibly and sensibly, sensitively with those difficult challenges. I would urge members to consider carefully any further drawdowns on the reserves in order to protect the financial stability of this council in what are likely to be extremely choppy waters. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Lingworth. Just to clarify, it's coming from earmarked reserves, not on earmarked reserves. It's coming from the COVID reserve. Um, just for clarification. Um, I have Councillor Colin Stewart next. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Provost, and may I uh, add my congratulations um, uh, to you on your elections, Provost, um, in addition to the members who've spoken earlier. Um, uh, on behalf of the independent group, I'm very happy to uh, support this motion, and I'm grateful to the leader of the council for bringing it forward um, in early course and uh, for the um, collegial way that he has um, discussed the matter uh, with uh, the um, other political groups. It is um, clearly critical, um, both elements, um, uh, the, 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 the holiday uh, hunger element and also the um, extension of the um, existing provision to um, uh, for, for um, tenants to uh, the private rented sector and the housing association rented sector as well. Um, and uh, I think it's also important to note um, that the leader of the council did say um, that um, future developments would be brought back um, in early order should there be insufficiency or should there be um, requirements to uh, be flexible around the um, requirements uh, around the um, parameters uh, for uh, these applications. Uh, as I say, on behalf of the independent group, very happy to support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Stewart. I have Councillor Duff followed by Councillor Rebeck. Uh, thank you, uh, Provost. Um, just say that the previous Conservative administration has previously allocated funds for the provision of food and activities for children, young people and families throughout the school holiday periods. And we recently included a further £100,000 for this, uh, for food insecurity, sorry, in our budget in February of this year. Uh, I welcome the two-part motion brought forward by the Leader of the Council uh, today to help those children and families facing the prospect of not having the availability of school meals during the holiday periods, and also all those who may struggle uh, to keep a roof over their heads, given the, the cost of living crisis that they're facing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duff. Councillor Rebeck. Thank you, uh, Provost. And congratulations also on your appointment, I should say at this point. Um, I understand the need for prudency in terms of financial reserves, but to use counselling, Councillor Illingworth's analogy, not entering choppy waters. It's already there. People have fallen overboard. We need to use this vital safely. Thank you, Councillor Rebeck. Um, I am not seeing any other indications of requests for comments, but I will just give it a second. In the last minute one. OK, then I will invite uh, the Leader of the Council to sum up. Um, thanks, Provost. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for their comments here. And uh, to Councillor Illingworth, I am well aware of the financial difficulties that this Council, or financial, hard financial decisions this Council will have to make moving forward. But at this time, the people out there, some people are having to make hard decisions every day, whether to eat or heat, and many other difficult decisions. So I think this is the correct time to do this. And I really welcome everybody across this chamber who has stated that this is the right thing to do. Uh, I take on board Councillor uh, Barrett's comments, and I would like that included into the way that this um, uh, fund is uh, set up. Um, and I welcome Councillor Duff and everybody else that's spoken. I think it's showing something that we can do, um, uh, and, and we can think about it if, if, we, if we share information. And, and can get a uh, motion out before it comes here and people are talking off the cuff. So I will certainly endeavour to uh, uh, anything that we're bringing forward as SNP group is shared 
so we can get some positivity helping uh, uh, our residents. So thanks everybody uh, for supporting this motion. Thank you, Councillor Lean. Uh, there being no amendment, can we all agree? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. The item is agreed. Um, if we could invite other members back into the chamber just to confirm that there is no other items of business today. OK, councillors, thank you very much uh, for bearing with us this afternoon. Um, the Head of Legal and Governance uh, wishes to make a quick comment, and then I will just check that other members don't have any other items of business. Councillor Barrett has made a request. For yeah, it was just to draw councillors' attention that as part of the motion, we did agree the revised timetable, and so the next meeting of full council will be June the 22nd, as opposed to 29 that was in the initial draft timetable that was circulated previously. For the council elections. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Barrett. Um, thanks very much, uh, Provost. Um, I wanted to apologise uh, to Councillor Parrott for not taking the opportunity earlier uh, to congratulate him on his uh, appointment as uh, Deputy Provost. Um, I've worked with Andrew uh, as, a, as a ward colleague, uh, worked with him uh, as a convener of the uh, Perth Common Good Fund. Uh, and uh, also uh, packing food parcels in the food bank for six months uh, during lockdown. I think uh, Andrew will make a huge uh, and telling contribution towards the uh, civic uh, uh, life uh, and, and, and the civic contribution uh, of Perth and Kinross Council, and I wish him all the best uh, in his post. I would concur with all of that. A chamber for selecting me this role. I hope over the years to pay the trust that has been. Councillor Duff. I thank you, uh, Provost. I had uh, hoped to make a similar comment um, earlier, but. Uh, Unfortunately, that we'd moved on before you, you noticed it. But uh, likewise, uh, Councillor Parrott, uh, Deputy Provost, I would like to uh, give you all the uh, heartiest of congratulations on behalf of the Scottish Conservatives. I'm delighted that you've taken on the Deputy Provost role. Look forward to working with you in that capacity. Thank you. Thank you. Any further If there are no further comments, members, thank you very much for your attendance this afternoon. Uh, we will meet on the 22nd of June. Thank you.